In this video, we are going to study the normal distribution. Normal distribution is one of the most widely used popular continuous probability distributions. IQ scores, weight, uh, height of people in general population are normally distributed. Your GPA scores, final exam results, etc. all these are normally distributed. And further, when we'll be working with inference models in this course, uh, we will make assumptions that our uh, population parameters are normally distributed. Now, um, the PDF of normal distribution is given here. Two parameters that we have to pay attention for is sigma and mu. Uh, mu is expected value, mean of our normal distribution, and sigma is standard deviation. However, this is the last time we'll be seeing the formula for PDF since if we would like to find probabilities related with normally distributed random variable, we have to work with the following integral and this integral here doesn't have analytical solution. Uh, however, all of this uh, is already done for us by numerical methods and we'll take a closer look at standard normal tables in a few minutes. All right, so. Um, uh, here is a plot of PDF for, for normal distribution. So we can see that it is symmetrical about its mean. Uh, here we have a couple of points of inflection uh, that are at one sigma, one standard deviation from mean. Uh, if we differentiate the PDF for uh, normal distribution twice and equate to zero, then we can find this solution for X uh, uh, for two points of inflection. Here we have a two normal distribution with the same mean of 50, but they have different variances. The normal distribution in this dashed line here uh, is a bit wider and fatter. Uh, meaning that it has greater than variance than the first distribution. Uh, so this rule is known as 68, 99.7% rule, uh, meaning that if we move one standard, de standard deviation left and one standard deviation to the right from our mean, then we'll have uh, 68. 3% of our data points lying in that interval. So the area under our graph uh, in the interval of one standard deviation to the left and one standard deviation to the right from our mean is equal to six, approximately equal to 68%. And uh, if we move two standard deviations from our mean, it's 95%, approximately 95%. And if we move three, per, three standard deviations from our mean, it's 99.7% of our data lying in that interval. Now, uh, this rule uh, works only for normal distribution. We'll get different results if we have some other distribution. Standard normal distribution normal distribution with mean of zero and variance of one is called a standard normal distribution. So we have the following notation. Um, to denote that random variable X is normally distributed with mean of mu and variance of sigma squared and if um, our random variable follows normal distribution with mean of zero and variance of one, then we say that this random variable is standard normally distributed. Uh, we have a special uppercase letter Z notation for standard normal distribution. So. Uh, here is a plot of PDF of standard normal distribution. It has the following PDF function. So we have to insert um, mu is equal to one and 
sigma mu is equal to zero and sigma equal to one to our PDF of normal distribution to obtain the following PDF for standard normal. So it is symmetrical about zero. It's a bell-shaped curve. Now, the reason we are introducing standard normal distribution is following. Uh, let's assume that you want to find probability that your random variable uh, is less or equal than 1.96, where your random variable follows standard normal distribution with mean of zero and variance of one. Then you can uh, calculate the following integral from minus infinity to 1.96. But we said that um, calculating that integral could be troublesome uh, and calculations are already done for us in the form of standard normal tables. So if we want to find probability that our random variable uh, z is less or equal than 1.96, we can go to the standard normal table. Uh, find the value of x equal to 1.96 and this value is given right here. So this probability is equal to 0.975, which means that um, if that point here is 1.96, we have 97.5% of our data lying to the left of that point and area under the area in the right table here is equal to 2.5% then. Now, um, you may be wondering, but uh, what happens uh, in the case if my random variable does not follow standard normal distribution and it follows uh, normal distribution? Then uh, we have the following nice property. Uh, if our random variable x follows normal distribution with mean of mu and variance of sigma squared, then the random variable x minus mu over sigma will follow standard normal distribution. So we can standardize our random variables that follow some general normal distribution by subtracting mean and dividing by standard deviation. Uh, let's confirm that this is true. Uh, let's say we have random variable x that follows normal distribution with mean of, let's say 120 and variance of 10 squared. Let's find probability that our random variable x uh, is less or equal than let's say 130. So first let's calculate that directly by using the following function in Excel. For, so for normal distribution, we use um, norm gist function. Uh, so x is 130, mean is given as 120, standard deviation is 10. I'll put for cumulative truth, so we'll have CDF function. So probability of that is uh, 84%. Now, this should be the same as uh, probability that my random variable z is less or equal than 130 minus mu 120 uh, over sigma, which is 10 where z is a standard normal distribution with mean zero and variance of one. Now this is equal to one. So we're looking for probability that z is less or equal than one. So let's calculate that. One mean is one, uh, mean is zero for standard normal, standard deviation is one cumulative is true. So we can see that those two numbers are the same. So to move on from general normal distribution to standard normal, we have to subtract mu and divide it by sigma. We can use the nice symmetry properties of normal distribution. Here we have a plot of PDF of standard normal. 
in a case when we are working with standard normal distribution, the CDF has a special notation, uppercase Greek letter phi at point A denotes the CDF of a standard normal at point A. Uh, now let's say we have a general point A here, then this is minus A. Since the area in the right tail, area under the graph uh, greater for values of z greater than a is equal to the area in the left tail, equal to the probability that my random variable z is less or equal than minus a. So we have probability that z is greater or equal than a is equal to probability that z is less or equal than minus a. So this is equal to CDF at point minus a. Now we can also represent this as one minus probability that z is less or equal than a. So this is one minus phi at point A. So one minus phi at point A is equal to phi at point minus A. So we use this, uh, we can use this, this symmetry property uh, if we are working with uh, tables for standard normal distribution. So let me share the screen. So as you can see here, um, uh, this Z table here is provided for only uh, positive values of, uh, of variable Z. So uh, if we want to find, let's say probability that our random variable is less or equal than minus 1.96, then we can use the properties that we have shown before. This should be equal one minus CDF at plus A at plus 1.96. So this is equal to one minus a probability at 1.96, which is equal to 0.975. So this is equal to 0 0.025. This is equal to 2.5%, which is true. Uh, if we look at our graph of CDF of standard normal, if we are looking for probability that our end variable Z is less or equal than minus 1.96, uh, we'll have 2.5% lying in the left table here, which we found by subtracting one minus probability that my random variable Z is less or equal than 1.96. So basically what we did here is we found an area in the right tail there. Okay, now let's come back to our slides here. Uh, so here is a plot of CDF for standard normal distribution. Uh, we have seen this table. Uh, now, uh, linear combination of random variables. So linear combination of random variables of the following type, uh, C1x1 plus C2x2 and so on up to Cnxn is known as linear contrast. And expected value of linear combination of random variables can be calculated as follows. So if we have expected value of linear contrast, plus and so on, plus Cnxn, 
it can be expanded as c1 expected value of first random variable plus c2 expected value of second random variable and so on cn expected value of nth random variable in the case when we are looking for variance of linear contrast it is calculated as follows Um, uh, important note here, uh, if we are looking for linear combination of n random variables, if all of them are independent, uh, then we can expand um, variance of that linear combination as follows. C1 squared variance of x1 plus C2 squared variance of second random variable and so on. Cn squared variance of n's random variable. Now, um, the Poisson limit theorem that we have studied in the previous video uh, is not the only uh, limit theorem, is not the only approximation uh, that we are going to study. If we are going to take a look at, at the plot of uh, PMF for binomial frequency and the following plot of normal distribution, we can see that uh, those two are uh, somewhat similar. So we can see a resemblance between those two. Uh, let's take a look at the following simulation. Now, let's assume that we'll be conducting the following experiment. We'll be throwing a coin 10 times. Uh, let's assume that probability of coin landing on heads is equal to 5%. And we'll be repeating that experiment again and again. Let's say 10,000 times. And we are going to plot our findings in the following nice graph. So um, let's make it a frequency plot by dividing by the total number of our coin tosses on each such experiment. Now this frequency plot here is going to resemble as a PMF of our binomial distribution with the following parameters. Number of uh, trials is 10. Probability of success on each trial is uh, 5%. Uh, now let's assume that we'll be throwing our coin uh, 100 times. So here is the PMF for that case. Let's increase the number of tosses again, up to 1,000. So what we can see here, our graph uh, is becoming more symmetrical. Here is a four, 10,000 times. Let's assume that we are throwing our coin 100,000 times. So as you can see, it um, gets more symmetrical and resembles as normal distribution more and more. So here is for 1 million times, if we are throwing our coin uh, 10 million times. So we get the following graph here. Now let's come back to our slides. So which gives us an idea that we can use normal distribution to approximate the binomial distribution. French mathematician Demover proved that areas under um, normal distribution curve can be used to approximate the binomial distribution, uh, which is summarized in the following nice limit theorem. Um, what this limit theorem states is 
um, in simple words, if X is a binomial random variable with parameters and number of trials and probability of success on each trial given as P, then we can use normal distribution uh, to approximate uh, this binomial random variable with parameters uh, mean that is equal to NP and variance that is equal to NPQ or NP one minus P. Uh, so we'll be used we will be using a simplified version of that approximation um, and I will be using it without continuity correction. If you want to take a look in more details on that subject, especially on continuity correction and the proof of that limit theorem, uh, you can find it in Larson and Mark's book at chapter 4.3. So we'll be simply using the following approximation. So we'll be saying that if X is binomially distributed with parameters N and P, and let's say in the case when N, P, Q will be larger than let's say five, then we can use um, normal distribution with parameters mean N, P and variance N, P, Q uh, to approximate our binomial random variable as normal one. All right. and uh, since we already said that from the derivation of Poisson limit theorem that Poisson distribution is a binomial distribution in disguise, we can also use normal distribution to approximate the Poisson distribution. Uh, here we have a plot of uh, a PMF a frequency plot for uh, Poisson distribution with parameter mean lambda equal to two, lambda is equal to five. So what we can see here, it gets more symmetrical and resembles as normal distribution more and more. So we will be using normal approximation to Poisson distribution in the following simplified form without continuity correction. Let's say if we have X, which is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda, then we can use normal distribution. We can say that um, our random variable X then is normally distributed with parameters uh, mean, that is equal to mean of Poisson, which is equal to lambda and variance, which is equal to variance of Poisson distribution. Uh, if you recall, the variance of Poisson distribution is equal to its mean and is equal to lambda. Uh, so we will be using this simplified approximation in the case, uh, let's say when lambda is greater or equal than 10. So lambda is large enough such that uh, our graph is more or less resembles the, P, the graph for PMF of Poisson distribution more or less is similar to normal distribution. So that concludes our uh, video on normal distribution.